Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Cheng Lei. I'm the professor of aviation at Swinburne University of Technology and also president of Institute for Aviation Research. Um, uh, welcome to uh, today's China session. So I'm now going to give you a 15 minutes talk about the um, changing landscape of China's aviation industry. So particular focus on market dynamics and airline strategic responses. Uh, after that, we will have a panel discussion. Yeah, so that's uh, 45 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yesterday, we heard actually quite a lot of speakers that mentioned uh, China. They're very curious how China has been going, you know, since they're uh, reopening the market. Here, uh, we got some data to, uh, to show you. The, um, uh, you can see here the, uh, the red line, the domestic recovery. Compared with uh, 2019, the market actually recovered quite well. So basically, you see uh, January to uh, December in uh, 2023, yeah? Okay, so the 12 months period, you see uh, domestic market actually quickly uh, reached the pre-COVID level. Yeah, so that's uh, recovering quite well. And the blue line here is for international market recovery. Uh, the international market recovery has been uh, slow compared with domestic because you see by the end of December last year, it's only recovered uh, less than 60%. But there is a clearly upward trend because when you look at the January last year, the recovery was just 10%. So China started with, you know, the, the international recovery started with a very low base, yeah, gradually um, recovering. So uh, the major markets, uh, North America is still a big, uh, uh, big issue for Chinese airlines, yeah. Now, what are the impact on Chinese airlines operational performance? A particular important data is uh, aircraft utilization rate. You see, here we show the data from July 2019 to December 2023. Before, uh, before COVID, you see the, uh, uh, here the, um, uh, the white body, that's the blue line here, uh, white body. Uh, before COVID, daily utilization rate was uh, around 11 hours per day. Yeah. And uh, now, you know, up to now, it's uh, less than eight hours. Yeah. 7.8 something, so white body, you know, uh, because the white body used for those uh, long haul routes, long haul routes are recovering uh, slow, so we got very uh, low uh, utilization. In terms of white bodies, the red line here, before COVID, the daily utilization rate was around um, uh, uh, 7.5 hours, so that uh, almost uh, covered yeah, with, uh, with the similar. So you see the gray line here, this is the overall daily utilization rate. Um, so this tells us a uh, lot of information, particularly about ALI profitability. Uh, uh, okay, during the COVID period, so that's from 2000 to uh, uh, 2022, ALI's lost heavily, particularly 2022. Uh, last year, AOLI uh, aviation industry in China still lost around 28 million, yeah, uh, 28 billion. So in total, when you look at this uh, four years loss, actually that has wiped out uh, more than 10 years profit for the entire aviation industry in, in China. Um, uh, the, uh, the biggest three Chinese airlines, Air China, China Southern, China Eastern, yeah, or, you know, made uh, uh, a loss uh, last year. So this, uh, the uh, uh, financial performance. However, we do see some profitable airlines, particularly uh, spring airlines, yeah, maybe profit, and also Hainan airlines, yeah, and the uh, Xiamen airline as well. So that's the industry. Now, how airlines respond to those uh, market uh, dynamics. Yeah. We look at, uh, uh, here we show the uh, data from Air China. Oops. Okay, data from Air China, you can see 
we, if we look at the AOLI, AOL China capacity distribution yeah, by, by region, you, you'll find out before, okay, before, before COVID, I used the data, you know, uh, February. Yeah, this month is the most recent data. So we compare uh, February 2024 against February 2019. You see, um, before COVID, AOL China, you know, 25% uh, capacity was uh, deployed in the international market. Yeah, 25%. And then, and now is uh, just you know, um, uh, 17 percent, yeah. So AO China become more focused on domestic market. It's easy to understand because domestic market has been recovering well, and the international market, you know, although now there are no uh, restrictions, uh, that we uh, observed the demand for international travel has still been uh, quite weak. I think that would be a topic that you know our panel can uh, contribute. Yeah, why you know the demand being weak for international travel. And if you look into the regional distribution for air China traffic, one thing particularly important you, you will notice is um, a North America market. Okay, uh, before COVID, air China, you know, almost 66% is the capacity was deployed in uh, North America market, particularly the United States. And now it's just 1%, yeah, generic, dramatic reduction, yeah. Um, though, of course, there are some like, uh, you know, uh, 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 political issues, traffic rights, yeah. But, but now the bigger question we ask, is this issue just temporary or would that be more permanent? Yeah, okay. And also when you look into Europe, yeah. Europe before COVID, AO China, you know, 8% of the capacity was deployed in uh, Europe. And now, you know, it's still 8%, 8%, 8%, yeah. Uh, so, so, so the European market recovered quite well compared with North America. And the, uh, one advantage with Air China is that it can fly over Russian airspace to, 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 to Europe. Yeah, so that's opportunity to work together with the European partners. Okay, now, uh, another quite interesting market is Asia. Yeah, uh, Southeast Asia, Northeast Asia, and, uh, and also uh, Middle East. One would expect, you know, Air China may redeploy some capacity in North America to Asia, yeah, but, but that actually hasn't really happened yet. Yeah, not for, not for Air China. Air China's capacity, you know, uh, in sort of like you know distribution in, in Asia has actually has actually reduced. So the more focus on a domestic market, yeah. So that's what we have seen for Air China. Now, uh, okay, another airline before COVID, Air China was the most profitable airline, and then uh, we have we uh, China Southern. Uh, China Southern was uh, uh, predominantly. Uh, 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 domestic airline, but okay. Before COVID, you know, its uh, its share of the domestic market was 82, 83 percent, and uh, at the moment it becomes even even higher, up to uh, 80, 88 uh, percent. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, if you see in North America, you know, the the, the share was reduced from 3.4 percent to uh, less than less than one percent. Yeah. Um, so, so, so this were big, and, and uh, some long haul routes for Air China for uh, China South was actually quite profitable to North America, but all, we have also seen a dramatic reduction. Another notable change is uh, Australia market. Before COVID, you know, China Southern was the largest operator uh, uh, in the uh, uh, you know uh, uh, Australia market from from you know from between China Australia market. So the, the, the market share was also reduced from 3.3% to 2.2%. Uh, okay, a, a major reason for that was that because many of those routes to, from China to Australia were not profitable for China Southern. Okay, before COVID, they can use profit from domestic market to subsidize their Australian routes. And now, you know, airlines are losing quite heavily they cannot afford to continue to do so. So you see the big reduction 
in the Australian market as well. Okay, uh, same as uh, Air China, you see the Asian routes was uh, the Asian market was also reduced yeah, from 5.6 percent to 3.8 percent. Yeah, um, you know China, the Asia, you know, and, and uh, uh, so you know so close to each other. Uh, you know, and the China and the ASEAN countries are actually considering to to further develop a strategic partnership. But that hasn't been reflected in airline strategy. Yeah, again, this is the topic that we, you know, our panel, you know, uh, can uh, contribute and share your insights uh, w w with our audience. And then we see Air uh, China Eastern. Uh, China Eastern again, you know, show a similar pattern. You know, mood, uh, more concentrate on the domestic market, and uh, then you see the uh, again, you know, for North American market reduced from five percent to less than one percent. But, air, uh, but, but European markets, you know, they, have, they have increase their capacity. So Europe has become a major market for those uh, uh, Chinese airlines as long haul operations. Uh, while, uh, while Asia, you know, also shows exactly the same pattern as Air China and uh, China Southern, you know, the, the market share, you know, the, the, in their capacity was reduced from 7% to, to 5%. Yeah. So the biggest three airlines all share a similar pattern. Uh, uh, Hainan Airline is the number four airline in China. Before COVID, we all know Hainan Airlines was very aggressive uh, in uh, expanding internationally. And now, again, you know, the, the airline's international market share has dramatically uh, uh, reduced in its uh, capacity distribution. Yeah. So, and, uh, uh, before COVID, North America was a particularly important market for them. That made actually quite good profit yeah, from this market. Again, you know, that reduced from 6% to 1%. Yeah. The other market also shows a similar, uh, similar patterns as the other uh, bigger three. Uh, then we have uh, Xiamen. Xiamen Neolai is actually the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the only, you know, possibly the only airline which has maintained, you know, when you look at Xiamen Airlines international market, its, um, it's capacity distribution was more or less the same, you know, before and after COVID period. And um, actually Xiamen Airlines was the only airline that made a consistent profit during the COVID period. The, the airline actually now uh, was, uh, uh, Founded in 1985, yeah, 1985. The airline has always been profitable in every single year, yeah. So during the COVID period, its performance, you know, we, we know Southwest airline used to be, you know, profitable for every year, but 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 but, but during COVID, you know, Southwest even lost money. But high Sham and airline, you know, was still profitable for all those, you know, uh, four years. That's uh, that's very, um, you know, uh, remarkable achievement for 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 this airline. And uh, how could uh, Xiaomi Neolai be very profitable even during the COVID period? Is because they, are, you know, they continue to fly those international routes, particularly long haul routes. Airfare was very high, you know, the price was very expensive. They generate huge profit for Xiaomi Neolites, and uh, so that's a very clever strategy that have we adopted. Um, okay, so so when we had to look at the analysis, one one may wonder. Okay, now Chinese airlines, you know, they become more and more focused on domestic market. They are, you know, they are retreating from international uh, routes. Yeah. So, so what will happen in China in the next few years? Will they continue to do so, or are we expecting some changes? Okay. Um, one big, one biggest uh, concern or worries or issues for Chinese airlines is high speed rail. Okay. China has the longest high speed rail. Uh, uh, system in the world, you know, the more than the rest of the world combined. You, you see those high-speed rail network, they connect all the major cities in China. You know, they're not, they're, they normally travel at just 350 kilometers per hour, say, for short-haul routes, for a short route, let's say, one-hour flight, yeah, one-hour flight, and the high-speed rail, you know, they can easily reach, you know, within two hours, and they're very punctual, yeah. And uh, so, you know, on those short haul routes, say less than 1,000 1, kilometers, high speed rail has taken lots of market share away 
you know, from high, from, from, you know, uh, airlines. Now in China, you know, for many passengers, when they think about where to, you know, to, to go for holiday or business travel, you for, for sure, the number one, you know, the, the, in terms of the mode of transport come to their mind is to go with high speed rail. Only when the high speed rail is not available, they think about airlines. Yeah, so, so that's a, a very big issue in China. It's going to be, you know, more and more, pose more and more serious challenges for Chinese airlines. So Chinese airlines, at the moment, they're focused on the domestic market, but we would expect that in the medium or longer term, they still need to expand internationally, because in the domestic market, you know, they have a very, you know, uh, serious competitors. And uh, if we look into the demand and the supply side, we will find those underlying drivers, you know, for China's air travel demand has actually changed a little bit. Okay, when you look into the uh, uh, demand, demand side, before COVID, you know, we have seen every year steady traffic growth, yeah, and uh, but then, you know, you, even, you know, COVID period is not surprising, it's reduced, but even last year is not returned to uh, the uh, 2019 figure. Uh, on the other hand, when you see the supply aircraft, every year we have new aircraft. So, so when you look at this year compared with 2019, I think the industry has got more than, I think, 380 aircraft. Yeah. So on the supply side, you see airlines keep on adding new aircraft into the market, but on the demand side, you know, is, is, relatively, is relatively weak. Yeah. So the, the, um, but, but for airlines, you know, we know many airlines in, in North America, in Europe, but air, elsewhere, you know, they just got rid of the aircraft yeah, to try to man, manage the supply demand. In China, airlines cannot because it's very difficult to get aircraft. You get rid of them, later on you want to get in the aircraft, it's a bit extremely difficult because the aircraft, you know, has been tightly controlled by CAAC. That's something very unique in the uh, Chinese market. So that's why you see the steady increase in terms of the aircraft. So airlines are not very flexible in managing the, the fleet. When the market has been growing, demand is strong, that's no problem. But the, when the demand has become volatile, that would create uh, serious issues for them. And, um, and also when you look into the, uh, look at GDP, you know, uh, 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 for a long time, you know, China's GDP has been a two, you know, double digit growth. But the growth rate in the past 10 years is, particularly in the past five years has, has reduced a bit. Last year's GDP growth rate was 5.5%. By Chinese standard, I mean by Western standard is still very high, but Chinese standard is relatively low, yeah, quite low. And uh, so we just you know, a, a lower GDP growth, and that may lead to, uh, you know, weak demand, yeah. So it may be, um, that leads to the conclusion uh, for my presentation, yeah. We can see the domestic market in China is recovering well following the reopening, yeah. And, uh, but the international market recovery has been uh, uh, pretty slow. So Chinese airlines are re deploying their capacity in response to market dynamics, as we have seen you know, from those major Chinese airlines. Uh, you, you may remember before COVID, you know, uh, Chinese airlines have opened many international routes, particularly those intercontinental routes. You know, they flew to everywhere in Europe and also penetrated to a number of secondary cities in, in North America. Okay, that was true and by economic growth, outbound tourism and uh, government support. Yeah, but, 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 but that's, um, you know, high growth rate is unlikely to be repeated in the next few years because we have seen the underlying drivers have changed significantly. Uh, however, given the fierce competition from high speed rail in the domestic market, Chinese airlines will continue to grow internationally, but the focus will be more on profitable growth, as we have seen, like uh, 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 China thousands, yeah, catch off their routes to Australia, and also they're more focused on short haul uh, rather than intercontinental uh, uh, markets. So that's the uh, you know some observations that we uh, uh, we have noticed for this particular market. Okay, good. So. Um, that's all for my presentation.